Hi guys, James at Rampant Line Reviews again for you today. For this video, we are going to do something a little bit different, and to be quite honest, this is something that I never really thought I would be indulging in. It's almost something that I've tried to actively avoid indulging in since I started the channel, if you like. But today, we are going to do a little bit of calling out somebody, and it's basically because of how this person has behaved. So today we are going to do a video calling out the Beer Hooligan. So for those of you that don't know, Beer Hooligan is a YouTube channel. He's been going around what, about a year and a half, two years, something like that. And um, to be quite honest, the man behind the channel, he just acts like a bit of an arse to be honest with you. So as of, I'm filming this for you on the 11th of March 2020 and within the last sort of week or so, maybe the last two weeks, there's been another release in Tesco in the UK of craft beer. Um, there's been a few things, quite a few Brewdog beers, a new Pale Ale, the OG Haze which is supposed to be the old, the original Hazy Jane beer, there's an Evil Twin Brewdog Vietnamese Coffee Stout which I'd really like to try, but the beer of controversy is the Modern Times Brewdog collaboration which is called Future Proof, a West Coast IPA. So I'll say straight away, I've not tried this beer yet. I live in Sweden, in the south of Sweden, I'm not going to be able to get a hold of this until I go back and visit the motherland of Scotland in a couple of, probably in about two months or something like that, that I might go back again for a wee visit. But anyway, this beer caused a little bit of a stir. Um, so the first incident, as far as I can place it, that happened here was um, there's a guy called Domo Hill and he is the sort of beer procurement officer for Tesco in the UK so he he's the one who's built a lot of this range now that, that Tesco have and you know there's been some awesome beers in there Magic Rock, Vocation Brewery and things like that you saw me review some of those uh, a couple of weeks back when I was back home in Scotland he's got some really good beers into Tesco he's improved the craft range quite a little bit but um, this Modern Times Brewdog beer, um, the general consensus on this beer is that it's a bit meh, okay? It's not very highly rated, but you know, Brewdog generally, I've said this in Brewdog reviews before, Brewdog have gone downhill since they started up. I studied chemistry in Aberdeen, I followed Brewdog from the early days compared to how their beer used to be and how it is now, night and day. Some of the stouts and things like this, some of the Imperial stouts, they still tend to be good. If I try a Brewdog beer and it's good like I had with the, the Hazy Jane can that I reviewed from Tesco incidentally a few months back, if it's a good beer, I'll tell you if it's a good beer. If it's shite, I'll say it's shite. Okay, maybe not in those words, but I will tell you right, yeah, no, that's just kind of meh, okay? But, um, yeah, so basically what happened was um, Domo Hill had done, um, there was a few things going around on Instagram, so Domo was prom promoting these new beers coming into Tesco, which is part of his job as the Tesco representative. But uh, our good friend Mark Burgess over at the Beer Hooligan decided he was going to do a whole calling out uh, Domo Hill for bigging up shit beer and things like that and having a go at the whole supermarket beer thing which is quite ironic when you consider that a number of his beers come from either Waitrose or Marks and Spencers which is basically a slightly more expensive supermarket make of that what you will but yeah he started having a go at uh, Domo Hill for just doing his job basically so you know he was just being an arse and generally this guy likes to behave like an arse so, um, for the next thing that happened was that Simon Martin, Real Ale Craft Beer, I've met him, nice guy. Um, he's had a bit of criticism in the past for you know, not researching beers and things like that, and not researching reviews. Um, and, but, you know, I've met him in person. He's a nice guy. I got on with him. I've been in a, one or two of his videos over on his channel right enough. Um, but he's a nice guy, first and foremost. Um, but yeah, so Simon made a video saying, oh, this beer was bad. And you know, Simon's a little bit of a showman. He likes to do this kind of whole, uh, you know, this whole washing the, you know, washing the car with Budweiser and all of this. And, uh, you know, it's a bit cringy. I will be honest, it is a little bit cringy, some of the stuff. But that's, that's what he wants to do. But the beer hooligan 
decided that he was going to kind of follow suit and he made this whole video pouring it down the toilet I would rather drink my own piss than drink this beer and blah 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 all of that kind of just uh, you know sensationalist reactionist crap essentially that's what it is um, so yeah he posted that and you know as he does with his, his videos he shares them around all of the the Facebook groups and things like please subscribe to my channel look check it out and subscribe to my channel question mark question mark isn't even in the right place but that's another thing that's me being a grammar Nazi um, but yeah so um, the next thing that happened there's a Facebook group called the UK non elitist craft beer forum so basically this is people who like myself have been kicked out of the UK CBF and the main reason for people getting kicked out of the U UK CBF is because the moderator of it, um, I forget his name now, Paul McDermott, I think he has a little bit of a personality disorder, he's a bit of a, str he's a, bit of a strange character, let's see. But anyway, um, the beer hooligan posted this video in the, the in the thing and then a few days later one of the moderators of the UK non elitist craft beer forum the I don't know I'm not even going to go into abbreviations there but Chris Hollins very he's a nice guy actually and um, very you know he's he's a good mod and things like that he's happy to chat away about beer he posted um, a picture of this the can of this uh, future proof modern times brew dog collaboration so um, yeah and then uh, Mark Burgess decided, oh, he was just going to argue with people. He's made this, oh, shocking beer and things like that. And people just commented, yeah, you made your point with that video captioned, I would rather drink my own piss and things like that. Um, but, yeah, you know, th there, was an, there was a thing like that. And um, this conversation just went on a little bit. So, you know, um, Chris Hollins put a comment back to him being um, like, you know, it's, yeah, you made your point and so on. And then the, the conversation evolved and, um, you know, Chris put, Chris Hollins put to Mark Burgess a very good point about, you know, why, in your video, you didn't say why it was, uh, why it was a bad beer. You just, you just went, you know, like, this is shite, Bleh. you know, you just talked, basically, um, I made the comment later that he slavered a load of pish and just wanted to get clicks, which is basically what he was doing. Um, and I made a comment to Chris about that. Previous to that, or prior to that, I had made a comment about, you know, there's certain beer tubers sort of buying subs. And the way you do that is you use the sponsorship mechanism on um, on YouTube. So it's, it's about placement and stuff like that. They've got algorithms where if you have uh, promoted videos and things like that, it may, creates more traffic on your channel and everything. And, you know, through that you get more subs and everything. So, yeah, he came back to me and made, oh, you've been making comments about... Uh, you know, buying subs and things like that. Are you jealous of my success? And I'm just sitting there like, dude, your channel has like 1.2 thousand followers. Mine has 3.5. Um, you know, it's uh, you know, it's not about the followers. In the grand scheme of things, nobody gives a shit about beer tube. It's a bit of fun, you know. Um, in the grand scheme of YouTube. I'd be very surprised if BeerTube is even 0.001%, you know, a thousandth of a percent. Um, you know, nobody gives a damn. It's all about the beer and having a bit of fun and socialising with the other beer tubers and things like that. But yeah, um, so I'm apparently jealous of the Beer Hooligans channel. That's quite funny, I have to say. Um, but yeah, this, it, it kind of evolved and the conversation... Um, he started going on about um, nobody wants to call out Brewdog and things, these beardy hipsters and stuff like this. Um, so let me just say for a point of order on this, I've called out Brewdog before. I've got a video where I've called out Brewdog. I studied in Aberdeen from 2009 to 2014 and that was the time, I think it was 2010 that Brewdog started and it was 2011 I think that they opened up, it was 2011 or 2010 where they opened up their bar. So I saw Brewdog grow. Compared to how they used to behave and how they now behave, they're corporate arseholes now. Let's put that out there, they are corporate arseholes and a lot of that is due to James Watt. The guy comes from a background in money, he was a lawyer, you know, he knows how to talk the talk. He turns on his uh, selling machine basically and, you know, there you go. That's he's he's very good at turning it on and uh, doing the whole corporate thing. You know, I remember back. Um, my sister used to work in the public sector, 
in Aberdeen. I won't say exactly where, just because, you know, privacy and all of that thing. But she worked in the public sector. And, um, you know, there was things like the local fire service and police force and all of this, you know. They talked to Brewdog about getting, like, a free brewery tour and things like that for their, um, for their charity auctions and, and, you know, stuff like this. And Brewdog just wouldn't do it. They just wouldn't do it. Um, and, you know, the whole thing about the... The, the bar in, was at Birmingham, where they sued them for using the lone wolf name and all this, you know. Brewdog, they just act like arses now. They've turned into the whole corporate machine that they promised they were never going to be. So yeah, I call Brewdog out. Brewdog are acting like dicks these days. But anyway, he started calling people, um, you know, I'm going to call out, uh, you know, calling people out, oh, people are, are scared to call out Brewdog and all these beardy hipsters and things like that. So, you know, I'm beardy. I'm not a hipster. I'm a metalhead. You know, I'm a you know, a massive metalhead. I I would have no idea what basis somebody could call me a hipster on. But anyway, um, this sort of thing I kind of wound them up a little bit just because you know being Scottish as a number of people in that um, non-elitist craft beer forum are. Um, you know, I was just like, let's just wind this guy up a little bit. Um, so I wrote, yeah. Um, here here are the far right tendencies coming again, and he wrote back. Uh, and this is the thing, I don't think this man has very much social awareness. He wrote back, oh, the Conservative Party wouldn't allow far-right people to be a member. And it was like, right, okay, bad point for two reasons. One, the Tories have this whole thing with the Windrush generation and the paedophile ring, so make it that what you will. Two, regardless of your political opinions, this group is full of Scottish people. Generally speaking, Scottish people do not like Tories. Social awareness, again, letting them down. Um, so yeah, he started going on about this whole thing about the Tories and stuff like that. And you know, I was just like, like let's, let's play along with this. Let's see how it goes out. Because um, I think, you know, to, put it, to, to be diplomatic about it, the guy's no very smart. He's no, he's no very smart. Um, and... Um, he just, he, he kept, he went on and on and on and on about this and he started going on about how Jeremy Corbyn disgusts him because his mother was half Jewish. Now, let me take you to a screenshot that I have, okay? This goes back to October or, I think it was October, there was the incident in the UK where there was a lorry came over from France, from or was it Belgium? It was one of the low, it was one of the, the countries in Europe. It came from the continent into the UK, and then it was found that there was about forty people had died in this uh, in this lorry. So here is a post that Mark Burgess made on his Facebook. This is the beer hooligan. Okay, you can pause the video and have a look at this for yourself. But this is a post that he made, and this is a screenshot that I made at the time because I responded to this post. Okay. Oh, it's gone off again. There you go. Let me just touch that and make sure it stays, right? So I'll bring it closer so you can look in at that. You can pause this and have a read at it for yourself. But basically, this post, it says, it's from 1814, I guess sometime late in October. But this is a, this is a genuine screenshot from his Facebook page because he didn't, he didn't have it private at the time. So he said, So since when have Chinese residents needed to flee their country to seek asylum in the UK? For that reason and that reason alone, I do not have any sympathy with whatsoever toward the 39 Chinese illegal economic immigrants that died in that lorry. These people were solely coming in here to exploit our generosity in receiving benefits, working cash in hand in restaurants and paying no taxes, being involved in criminal activities like selling sex, drugs and DVDs. Our country has become a shit pit, capital letters, shit pit, because of the likes of these economic parasites. China is one of the richest countries in the world. It's not war-torn or having a famine, etc. Right. So, where to start with that? I responded to this because obviously, um, those of you that watch my channel will know, my, um, my partner is Japanese, my son is half Japanese, okay? So, um, I'm, I'm quite interested in Asia generally, I, I read quite a lot. My background, chemistry, physics, I work as a programmer these days, okay? 
So, um, first things first, obviously, I love Hong Kong and I've been to Taiwan as well. I've not been into mainland China yet, but I've got quite an awareness of how the, the government in Beijing operates. Okay, so, and a lot of people that have a bit of common sense on this issue know that the government in Beijing behaves quite questionably to how they treat their own people. Okay? And I will be straight up here, yeah, I have to be diplomatic about this because I probably will travel to China at some point. And if this is in the public domain, I don't want to get in trouble. But we'll say some of the stuff that goes on in China is questionable. Okay, We'll leave it at that. So, um, I sort of wound Beer Hooligan up saying, oh, you have you know, your far-right tendencies and things like that. And he's like, what far-right tendencies? And um, he started saying, oh, if someone can't work out that they work hard in the UK under, uh, if they work hard, they'll be better off under the Tories. I can buy expensive Mercedes and, uh, and, get, and have money for lovely craft beer and things like that under the Tories. I can have more money for this. Um, and I was just like, well, you know, I, I went into a wee sort of historical thing because I've studied economics as well. And again, Asia interests me. The whole... Asian economic system, the countries that have been successful, it's because of government intervention and because of um, egalitarian systems, you know, Korea, Taiwan, um, Singapore and, and Hong Kong are a bit different, we won't go too much into it, but these are basically the key, um, the, the sort of key, what's the word I'm looking for, these are the key things you need basically for economic success. So I made a post about that and be like, oh I didn't think I'd be having to school you on West Coast IPAs and uh, how the fundamentals of economics work. So there was that and um, basically after that I just said, uh, I reminded, he said of oh, far right tendencies, my mother is, uh, you know, my mother was half Jewish and things like that and um, he's made other comments to that, to other beer tubers, we won't go too much into that, but he's made other comments about this, his mother being half Jewish and things like that. So let's just put it out there. Um, you can still be racist if you are half Jewish or you can still be racist if you are Muslim or Christian or whatever. It is still possible to be racist, okay? This post that I've shown you here, yeah, you know, if we're being nice about it, this post here, if we're being nice about it, whether it's racist or not, it's up for debate. But, the per you know, whoever would write something like that about 40 people dying, is a complete and utter fucking dick. Let's just be straight about that. Whoever would write that is a complete and utter wanker. You know, <laughs> there's no debating that at all. So this whole thing, you know, trying to use Jewish heritage or whatever does not kind of excuse making comments like that. If anything, if you come from a group that has faced that kind of persecution, Surely you should be a little bit more empathetic. That's what you would think. So, yeah, basically, after I wrote to him and said, oh, a certain po I remind, he said, what far-right tendencies? The Conservative Party would not allow me to be a member if I had far-right tendencies. So, um, yeah, um, he made this and said, and I said, I said a comment, something along the lines of, oh, a certain post you made about the Vietnamese slash Chinese people, because I couldn't remember whether they were Chinese or Vietnamese, turned out later that they were Vietnamese. Um, so I made a comment about that, a certain post you made about the country being a shithole or a shit, I think I said shithole, but obviously he said shit pit. I made a comment about that, and then he said, oh, you're lying now, you're making up crap. Well, okay, if I'm making up crap, What's that? So after I uh, commented on this, because I, I commented on this, I'm not friends with him on Facebook, incidentally. After I commented on this, um, he deleted the post and it disappeared. But I took a screenshot because, you know, I just thought, well, okay. Um, I took a screenshot of this um, just to, and I found it in my phone. I knew I had a screenshot of it and I found it, but when he started accusing me of lying, um, I just kind of thought, thought, do I still have this? And it turned out I did. So, um, yeah, that is the kind of man the beer hooligan is. He decided he was going to make an issue of calling out Domo Hill for doing his job. So, I kind of thought, me being Scottish, and it's sort of been part of our culture, if you like, that we, I think Scottish people 
generally have a good sense of justice. We have quite a strong sense of justice and injustice. I think it's fair that Mark Burgess is called out for what he is, for just being, you know, a little bit of a kind of closeted racist um, and just not a very nice person, just a bit of a dick, to be quite honest with you. So, um, yeah, that's a bit of a roundabout way of me making my peace. Um, I hope in some way that it's been coherent, but uh, yeah, I just felt I had to say something on this because, you know, I don't like people having their name blackened without reason and stuff like this, and that's what he tried to do to Domo Hill, who is just doing his job. So I hope that now you can realise what kind of man the beer hooligan actually is. Basically a racist member of the Conservative Party, and you know, Every party has its extremists, um, and that includes the, the SNP, the Labour Party, the Liberal Democrats, even the Green Party will have their own extremists and things like this. You know, um, he needs called out on that and he needs dealt with. The man obviously doesn't have the social awareness to realise that he's annoying people. He doesn't have the, the grey matter, basically, to really fully understand what he's saying. He doesn't seem to have the grey matter to actually go and read about things and make an informed uh, opinion. But, you know, that's his prerogative. I just kind of felt that I wanted to see my piece. Let's leave it at that. I'm going to go and finish off this beer, which incidentally was this one, Gamma Brewing Freak Wave, which was lovely. I filmed my review of that before I filmed this video. I'm going to go and have something to eat and then I'm going to go back to work. Catch you guys very soon. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Something different. Slangin, skull, cheers. Catch you soon. And, you know, beware of some of the questionables on beer tube. It's all a bit of fun. It's all about the beer. And, you know, the sensationalist, reactionist, clickbaity stuff. Fuck that. Cheers.